Hey everyone, this weekend we were treated to a hung draw at Wembley and Iran elected a new president, so that means they're going to be treated to a hung drawn and quartering at their national stadium next week as the political prisoners welcome a new government as part of a grisly final 15 minutes of fame. First of all, that England-Scotland match, though, it started off with the players kneeling for the Black Lives Matter movement, sparking confusion in the process as some of the Scottish players thought that someone had dropped a pound coin onto the pitch and there was money to be had by whomever found it. Anyway, that political stunt ended up being the final score in the end. Neil, Neil, no, no. A pretty dismal performance, really, by both sides in 19 minutes of slow, uninspired rubbish. The England fans can sing football's coming home all they want, but frankly, it's about as likely to come home as Shamima Begum, and the only shots on target from the Scots were from the bottles of Jägermeister and that embarrassing drunken rabble huddled out at Leicester Square tube station. A few weeks ago the wife asked me if Scotland really hadn't qualified for this tournament since France hosted it in 1998 to which I corrected her no that's the World Cup you're thinking of we haven't qualified for this tournament since England hosted it in 1996. Scotland have not been very good this century I must admit and it doesn't make qualification easier when Yugoslavia get to enter a dozen teams these days at least there's just one German entry to contend with I guess. Anyway talking about fanaticism ultimately leading to depressing results Iran has a new president he's called Abraham Raisi and the BBC call him a strict conservative which could mean anything really knowing them maybe he fancies crucifixion fiction as a form of punishment, maybe he just has extreme political views like opposing the idea of James Bond being portrayed by a Nigerian lady. As things stand, it's very much the first of those. Iran is going to be the same place as it ever was, or at least the same place as it's been since the revolution in 1979. Prior to then, of course, the country known as Iran was still called running and it was surprisingly liberal. Thereafter, of course, there was a crackdown against Western culture, although I once heard that back in the 80s they had a cover band called Karan Karan. As to Mr Raisi, I'm sure he's got some choice things to say, especially when it comes to Joe Biden's desire for rekindling the nuclear treaty and the lifting of sanctions, all of which, of course, is just a smokescreen for discussing Iranian social freedoms and the US support for Israel. You know, The thing that rarely seems to be mentioned, though, is that neither side actually wants to compromise in any of this. They both see it as a religious conflict where there's no middle ground in God's eyes. When it really comes down to it, the entire region only really gets two choices of government, Western liberal democracy, of which the Jewish state of Israel is the only one, or brutal Sharia autocracy and sectarian genocide that goes along with it. It's an argument 4,000 years in the making, I guess, although perhaps Joe Biden could get a rehearsal by flying into Birmingham and trying to settle some kind of armistice within the Labour Party before he travels to the Middle East to discuss the same issue. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.